What up, YouTube? This is Steven, and welcome back. All right, so this morning I was checking my email, right? And I found a really pleasant surprise, and that was my DNA test results, or my ancestry DNA test results from 23andMe. I was like, I wasn't expecting this for like probably another month and a half. Right, so I'm like, oh wow, I'm like really excited about these test results. And by the way, before I get into this, um, I'm going to leave some um, time marks in the description just in case you may not want to hear me babble on and you just want to see the, you know, the results. Okay. <clears throat> um, but yeah, I was like really excited. I was like, wow, they're back. Which is strange because I already have test results from um, Ancestry DNA, um, you know, their website or, you know, their organization. But I think for that time, it was like Christmas and you didn't know what you were going to get at all, you know, when I did, did it the first time. But this time, it's kind of like Christmas, but I kind of, you know, maybe have seen my parents come in with some bags and like, hmm, that could be my gift, you know, and I you know, kind of um, caught a peek of what was in the bag. <laughs> it's kind of like that. <clears throat> but yeah, um, Ancestry, well, uh, 23andMe, um, they came back with the results pretty quickly compared to um, Ancestry DNA. They took, they said eight weeks and it took pretty much eight weeks. This one, they said six to eight weeks, but it took probably, they received it May 27th, and I received, and they sent me my results today, you know, June 12th, all right, so let's check out what these results are, I'm very interested to see how this that pans out and do a comparison of the test results as well. All right, so they're saying they have five different reports for me here. So I'm like, okay, all right. This is going to be a little interesting because Ancestry DNA, they only gave me like pretty much just one report. All right. <clears throat> so I'm going to read off, um, you know, the standard breakdown, you know, kind of like, what percentage are you of each racial group, right? Let's get let's get into this. All right. <clears throat> All right. For sub-Saharan African, right? Overall, overall, I have fifty-seven point eight percent sub-Saharan African DNA in me. All right. A little more than half. A little more. All right. So that is beautiful. Extremely beautiful. And they break it down. They don't really give me much of a breakdown here <laughs> for some reason. Um, but they break it down as West African, 53.5%. Central and South African, 2%. Broadly Sub-Saharan African, 2.3%. You know. So... You know, not much. They're not giving me like a ton of information on my African DNA. They just gave me like West African. Here you go. <laughs> All right. Um, so, yeah, um, that's a little a bit of a downer, especially if you were looking for a specific place in West Africa, like many African-American people are, because we typically know, OK, West African. We know that. All right. We know that. <clears throat> All right. Um, Let's move on to the next racial group. Here we go. European DNA. And that is at 38.8%. And for the European DNA, they give quite a breakdown. Ain't that something, right? Ain't that something. All right. Northwestern European, 19.4%. British and Irish, 11.3%. Broadly Northwestern European, 8.2%. Okay. All right. So, you know, British and Irish aren't really a surprise. Usually, right? 
we we usually don't get surprised by that. However, they give me um, Ashkenazi. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Ashkenazi Jewish um, ancestry as 12.1 percent, and I find this like really interesting, right? Because this came up in the um, ancestry DNA test results too, um, and some people were like, eh, I'm not sure, you know, you know, that place might be run by Jewish people and they like to overstate Jewishness. Um, <clears throat> and by the way, I'm going to do like a um, compare and contrast um, later in this video too, all right, between both test results. Um, but for now, I'm just going to go through the test results or I got from um, 23andMe, all right. But yeah, um, I actually found out that my cousin did this test. Um, not this test, um, but he did the Ancestry DNA test, right? And he also, um, I'm not sure his percentage, but he also um, discovered uh, like European Jewish DNA, right? In his, um, on his test results. You know, my other cousin had told me this and like we're blood cousins right we um like our fathers are brothers so that's how we're like um connected right <clears throat> and we have the same grandparents as well and one cousin said he thinks that that came from our grandmother perhaps perhaps you know but on to the next southern european 2.7 percent and that's you know iberian Peninsula, right? The Iberian Peninsula. So that's like Spain and Portugal. And that's 0.8%. Um, right? Broadly Southern Euro European, 1.9%. Broadly European, 4.6%. Okay. <clears throat> you know, so far it seems like, um, you know, 23andMe doesn't give you quite as much as of a detailed breakdown as Ancestry DNA does. All right, let's move on to the next group, and this is East Asian and Native American. Two point eight percent. Okay, all right, this is um, interesting. So Native American, um, I guess they don't give a breakdown of this either, but one. 0.6 percent uh southeast asian one percent broadly east asian and native american 0 0.3 percent okay all right so you know i got me like an asian ancestor you know our native american ancestor are both like you know floating around somewhere right <laughs> you know asia uh, south asian less than 0.1 percent hmm all right broadly south asian less than uh 0.1 percent unassigned 0.4 percent so <laughs> they couldn't find out what to do with like 0.4 percent of my dna they couldn't find any um matchups there <clears throat> um i think um on ancestry dna that test they did Everything was accounted for, I believe. You know. So yeah, you know that's my breakdown. You know from Twenty Three and Me. All right. 